please stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. As a father is kind to his children, so the Lord is kind to those who honor him. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Please be seated. We gather today for the worship of God and to recall in this service of witness to the resurrection, the life and faith, the many accomplishments of boy Richard Stewart. One of the things we remember is that boy was a truly determined man, a man with a strong sense of what was right, what was fair, what was fitting. He made decisions and then he abided by those decisions. His death on Monday is a great tragedy, but it does, I think, reflect Hoy and the way he lived his life. It reflects his desire to do what was, in his own careful estimation, the right thing. And therefore, in a mysterious way, his death bears true witness to Hoy's strength of character. That strength has been taught and developed in his children. That strength sustains them today. Today, let us recall Hoy's 83 years and his 59 years of marriage to Linda, his quiet authority, his deep love of his family, his desire to have his family at home with him, his skill to repair almost anything, and his simple foundational rules for living. We are aware of just what a gift to us from God boy's life has been. Scripture reminds us that as many of you were baptized into Christ's name, boy, of course, was baptized in the name of Christ, you have been clothed with Christ. And more than that, you are clothed with the glory of Christ. And so that is what we celebrate today, that boy is clothed with the glory of Christ, and we give thanks.
Let us pray. God of hope, our light in the darkness, we know that nothing can separate us from your love through Christ Jesus our Lord. We ask you to sustain us with your strength during this time and calm the troubled waters of our hearts so that we may hear your words of comfort. We pray that your peace, which passes all understanding, will reign in our hearts until the day we join Hoy and all those who have gone before us in your home, where death and despair have no power. In the name of your redeeming Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from Ecclesiastes, a powerful passage about what we experience in life those ups and downs, and that there is a time for everything. Listen now for a word from God. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what I planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Please join me in saying the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hoy said recently that he had lived a good life up until now. And he said he believed that the next world would be better. I wonder where does a thought like that, a presence of hope so bold come from, that there is a better world, that there is a better life to come. Where does such a bold hope come from? Well, of course, it comes from Scripture and from faith that is born of reading and understanding Scripture. Listen to these verses from John's Gospel, verses which are so critical to our believing. Jesus says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also in God. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you unto myself, so that where I am, you will be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Amen. Hoy was one of those rock-ribbed, blue-stocking Presbyterians that you read about, but very rarely see anymore. His heritage generations ago was in the Scottish Highlands, the Scottish Highlands which embraced Presbyterianism with John Knox. Fundamental to that Presbyterian stripe is a joy and a security that accepts God's great sovereignty over everything and especially over the salvation of souls. That Presbyterian strike trusts and knows that God saves souls and does so lovingly. Well, where does that confidence and assurance, that bold hope, where does it come from? Listen to these verses from the book of Romans. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn of a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are far more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Having heard the words of Scripture, having felt in them that bold promise which leads us to a bold faith and assurance, let us together affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed as it is printed in our order of service today. And let us stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Holy Spirit, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And let us continue in prayer. Lord, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in Thee. And so we give thanks that boy Richard Stewart has now found that perfect rest. We can only imagine.
imagine that Hoy's life, full as it was of high personal and moral standards, now finds itself truly at home. We thank you for Hoy's love of his family. Thank you for the memory we have of his saying with a slight grin, very slight, and a twinkle in his eye, the twinkle perhaps more apparent than the grin, thank you for the thought we have of his saying that if you keep your children at home and keep them busy, they won't get into any trouble. Thank you that Hoy taught his children the value of self-sufficiency. Thank you for his extraordinary low-key authority. He barely had to say anything to assert his kind but firm will. When death came on Monday, it was a mystery, as it is always. But it was a mystery that Hoy seemed to have managed and handled in his own way. So we even thank you for that, O oh Lord. We pray your kind support, O oh God, for Hoy's family so dear to him. We pray especially for Linda, for Dan and Barbara, for Marilyn and Tom, for Marcia and Ronnie and their families. Grant to us the Easter certainty that death is not the end, but a beginning, not graduation, but a commencement of a new vitality. Not a door closing, but a gate opening to a new and perfect day. Give us faith in these things that we may live and love and trust and hope in the ennobling perspective that makes us Christians. Give us faith for the living of these days that you've given to us. Make us sure that Hoy's life has now made a new start with your love still all around him. And as our hearts are gathered together in sadness, but also in the joy of the assurance of the resurrection, hear us now as we join our voice, voices in praying that prayer our Lord has taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The unison commendation is printed on the back of our order of service. Together, into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Hoy, acknowledge we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Stand. This 
service and witness to the resurrection has been offered to the glory of God and in loving memory of boy Richard Stewart. Now let us receive the benediction. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every way, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and to him be all the honor and power and glory.